Hello there, I'm Chris, and today I'm going to talk about hacking with government data. I got a bit of a cold, so I might sound like I'm an old-time radio, and if I waffle on a bit, that's the reason as well. So sorry about this, but I thought I want to get this out of the door. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about a competition by Warwickshire in England. They released some of their datasets out there and asked now hackers to build a cool little mashup for them. One of the prizes is an iPad, and I thought an iPad would look good on me, so I actually thought I'd build something for them. As I am a geek and I want to help other people as well, I'm now recording this to show you what I've done to build my mashup. So the first thing I was looking at is what kind of data does Warwickshire Open, uh, open Data have for me? So I looked at the website and I saw that they have all kind of stuff for me. They've got uh, bridge height restrictions, bridge weight limits, capital program, election results, school information, pupil information. All of this stuff is quite interesting, but I thought I want to do something easy and simple that has been done several times, but I wanted to give it a bit of a twist and make it a bit more useful. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking the country parks, the libraries, the museums and galleries, and the schools in Warwickshire area, and I put it together on a map in a nice interface that you can filter and actually just see what you want to see. So if we take a look at the data sets, you'll find that most of them come in XML. So the country parks, come as an XML information here with parks, park, name, address and so on and so forth. They come with a link, coordinates and an image and that's all I need to actually plot them on a map and make something cool out of it. If I don't like the parks, I want to go to libraries as well, I get the same data information here and it's actually structured the same way as well. So if I load this, I will see that there's libraries, library, name, address and so on and so forth, all the information for me. This is pretty cool and it's pretty seldom that you get data in such a clean format, so thank you Warwickshire. However, if I take a look at the schools and they actually do the list of all the schools, which is the only one that comes with, uh, with latitude and longitude data, I find that this is a different data set here. So I've got all kind of weird stuff going on. I got it's called records instead of schools. I got school here, often in uppercase. I don't know what an FID is, what an STAB is, or whatever they, all the other things are there. I got an address in uppercase as well. So these are all things I have to think about later on. And this is sometimes the most annoying thing when you try to build a mashup. Also, make sure that you know that latitude is not written like this and it's not the latitude either. So let's hope that they don't fix that because then my mashup has to be fixed again as well. So if you build your own API, make sure that you spell check your stuff before you actually do it. Okay, once I have the data sets that I wanted to have, I became lazy. I could load all of them and I could convert all of them myself, but I thought, why do that myself if there's YQL for this? So YQL, in, y in Yahoo's YQL, I can actually take three different data sets or four different data sets like here and just put them together in one XML document and I get them back as YQL or as JSON more or less or as XML. So in this case, I say select star from XML where URL in and the four URLs that I've just shown you. And if I test this out, I get one aggregated XML file that I can do something with. So once that's finished loading, it's actually going to show me all the data in one go. So there you go. It took so much time to get all of, all of these and then it gives me the results, the parks first, and then it gives me the libraries and then it gives me the, um, what's coming next? Next should be the museums and then the schools. So all this information is now in one data set instead of, instead of four of them. So if I want to do that in my mashup, I have to use one HTTP request rather than four HTTP requests. I also can get it back as JSON and I don't have to give it a function back. I can say I don't want any diagnostics and I test this out and I get just a chunk of uh, JSON back instead. So down here in YQL, I can actually get the information and just copy and paste a REST URL to get the information back. But I don't do that right now, I do that later on. Using YQL gives me a few benefits that other things don't have. I, I get the information cached, I get it from a fast server, and I get it back in a format that I can actually predict, which is quite good in this case. And I only have to point to one endpoint and don't remember anything else. I could copy and paste this URL down here and just use it in the browser or use it in my code, but I actually wanted to make it more comfortable for myself and actually do the YQL statement in my code later on. So that's all good and fine, but what have I done with it? What does it look like? So the final mashup looks like this. When you load it, 
it actually gets the information, shows me all the information, and then starts loading a map and plots all the things on a map. So I got libraries, I got parks, I got museums, and I got at schools. I hit the schools from up front because if you click them, you realize there's a lot of them in the area. So if you hide all these and show all these, you can actually filter down to what you want to have. So if I want to have parks only, I can see this one here, for example, is the Rides and Pools Country Park. And if I click on it, I get a photo and I get the data from it. If I show the libraries, I have more information about those. I actually have a telephone number, I've got a fax number, and I've got an email, and so on and so forth. I can show the museums, and I can click on those, get the information from those, and I can filter down by what, what I want to have. Notice also that it focuses here for keyboard users, so that's working as well. So if I show the schools, I can get lots and lots of information here. If I don't want to use the map, I can actually scroll down here and just see the parks as one big list as well here or I can actually go to the museums, or I can go to the libraries or the schools. I can filter it down this way and click and open and close but that, that way I want to. If a browser is not available and JavaScript is not available, it actually falls down to a simple list, which is something that I wanted to make sure, because it's quite easy when you use a map API that you actually start with JavaScript and just make everything very, very clever. All I wanted to do here is have a, have a little display that works with everything, that works with a mobile phone, that works with an old browser, that works with a text browser. And this information is now available for everybody and I can use my browser, in-browser search, I can just look for different uh, uh, mails, I can use for different addresses. All of that is possible. This is the most simple way I can display this information. And if I turn on JavaScript again, it automatically turns it into a nice, uh, into a nice map without me having to actually maintain it in two different spots. And that was one thing that I wanted to make sure. It's quite easy to actually copy the data into the map API and maintain it on the page, but all I wanted to do is render out an HTML document and then make a nice map out of it. So I will talk you through that in a second. Before I started coding, I wanted to know something. I wanted to know that my layout will work and I wanted to get these nice icons here because I can pixel myself, but I haven't done it in years and why should I do it if somebody else wants to do it and does it better than me? So I looked around and in my RSS feed there was a blog post about some really cool new icon set on DeviantArt by somebody called Bogdan Miaucic, I think, I hope I pronounced that the right way. So if you look at his icons here, he actually released them and their creative commons and I can use them and I just downloaded them and used them in my little mashup. So no need for me to do this. When it comes to actually the CSS layout, I use the YOI grids controls. So I don't want to learn about my layout anymore. I want to make sure that it works and it works for all the browsers out there. And this is why YOI actually built it and this is why we use it in Yahoo. So what I do, did as well here is instead of actually going for it and reading all of these things, I just used the YUI grids builder. So I said like, I want 750 pixels. I don't want any columns. I want to have some columns here and so on and so forth. I click my stuff together. I say show code and I can copy and paste the code and I can start my web page that way. So that's what I did. And I think it would be a good thing if you did it as well, because you don't want to learn about the CSS anymore. I don't want to worry about different browsers anymore. This is going to get fixed when a new browser comes out. So why not actually use things that have been done for you already? So if you go back to our mashup, we will see that actually the grids are in place and uh, the, the icons have been used. So if I look at the code of the whole thing, what I've done here, there's not much to it actually. There's just the icons for the different museums, there's a logo for the Warwickshire County Council, and there is one index.php file, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file. All in all, the thing is 25k. Okay, it uh, downloads a lot of data from the web, so in the end it will be like 100k, the whole page, and gzipped on the server it will be about 16k. But this is not much that you actually have to do. So let's take a look at what we've done here. So the first thing that I did was actually uh, write the index.php and just render out a plain and simple HTML page. So in this case, I start here with an obg set handler, which actually gzips the page. This was done later on, but you don't, uh, we don't need to, under, uh, to go into these details yet, but it's a great idea to do on a, on a live website. Then I got my doc type and all the things that I need to actually have the grid layout that I copied and pasted from the grids uh, control. Actually, for myself, here in uh, TextMate, I've written myself a little short, a shortcut, maybe something that you want to set up for yourself as well. 
cost, uh, saves you a lot of time. So <coughs> I've written some information here about it. Here you can find all about libraries, parks, and museums. I put a container in there which contains the map and the info. The map will later on contain the map, and the info is the block on the right on the right hand side that gives the information about the different schools. And then we start with the PHP. In the PHP, I've got my uh, YQL statement that I showed you before. Select star from XML by URL in those four URLs. I send this to the Yahoo API's endpoint, URL encode the, uh, the YQL statement. I don't want any diagnostics and I want the format to be JSON. And then I do a curl call. Curl is actually simulating a browser in my PHP. So I'm actually going to that URL, get the data back, and get the information and store it in the output variable. Then I can actually go to the data and do a JSON decode output to turn it into a PHP object. So whenever I do this, the first thing that I actually do is actually pull, uh, get the data out and see if something came back. So what I can do with here, for example, is echo output, and that will give me the JSON back that actually came from the uh, from the service. So if I try that on my local machine instead of on the on the other machine, and I reload the page, I will get a lot a lot of data in the page displayed for me. So this is what comes back. So I got a query and account, and then it starts with the parks, parks results, and so on and so forth. So this is JSON that comes back, and that makes a lot of sense already. But to turn it into something that PHP can, can use, I actually use the JSON decode. So instead of doing the echo output here, I do a print R data after I did the JSON decode to see what PHP makes out of that. So if I try that out, I will get actually a display that is a bit more confusing, but actually when you look at the source code of the page, it becomes much more readable. So here I got a query, account, results, parks, park, and park is an array with uh, all the data that I need, and then I got the libraries as a data set, and I get the, all the way down, I get the museums and the schools as a data, as a data set as well. So all of this now is natively now available for me in PHP, and that's something I can actually work with. So all I've done here then is actually to start a different output for all the different sections. So I've got a div class section, which is def which I define to actually have a distance between these different elements, the parks, and so on and so forth. I have an H2 with the parks, and I show how many parks have been found. Then I start with a UL, and I give it an ID. And then I loop over the data set that came back. Came back. So I analyzed what came back here and actually said data query results parks park is the array and then I go it go through it with a pointer with with an uh, with an in, um, with numeric pointer where I am and the data set that I'm getting back and then I start rendering out a list item. I test if there's an image and if there's an image then I set a class to list item. This allows me to put uh, to put like padding on the piece and all these things to give space for the image. Then I have an ID to each of these elements, which is called in this case P because it's for parks and the running number, which is the K. Then I have an H3 with the with the link of the uh, of the park and the name. I test if there's an image available. I render out the image, and then I wrote a little function that's called add para. Because a lot of the uh, I could have just rendered out paragraphs, but a lot of times the data sets when I looked through them they came back empty. So I wanted to test if the if the data is available and only add a paragraph to my HTML if it's necessary. Because empty paragraphs actually don't look good and are actually just confusing. I then to put a p class geo on that where I put the lo the location in inside a span, and that way I can actually rent re later on the JavaScript read out that location and put it on the map. I close my UL, I close my li, I close my div, and I can do that for each of the sections out there. So all of those are more or less the same. I could have copied and pasted them, but sometimes you just want to keep them different for each of the sections because later on there might be a different in there, difference in there. Of course, the uh, uh, the schools being our problematic part is where uh, we have to go all uppercase. It just looks dirty. It's just really annoying to do. And as you remember, the schools had had addresses that came actually in a whole uppercase, which is just not nice to display. So I'm actually string to lower them here, and then I give them uppercase words to make them look a bit different, uh, look better. Also, the latitude and the, with the misspelling here and the longitude don't come as a string but come as a set, which actually I prefer, so I have to do something different for the schools here. The add para function itself just checks if there is a paragraph available, if the content came back, and then it actually 
puts the paragraph around something with a string and actually renders it out only when it's needed. And this is actually all I, de all I needed to do to render out all the lists that I showed earlier. Now, how did I find all these different L image and so on and so forth? When, when I do something like that, I normally start by just putting a, putting a um, putting out a print R in the list. So I basically check what data comes back for each of the sections that I have. So I do a print RP here for my uh, for my parks, for example. So if I reload this and I open the list for all the parks. I will now have this data here. If I look at the source code of the page, once again, this comes out nicely laid out. So what I normally do with this, I just copy and paste this in. So I have it in my lay uh, in my code, so I know what comes back and what they, what format it's in. So instead of having the print p here, I would just do a uh, comment, and then I put the information in there, and then I start laying out my HTML like I did here, and I know which comes back, and sometimes it's empty, and so on and so forth. So this is a little trick to actually find the information without having to reload your page all the time. Just keep the information in there. Just make sure that you delete it afterwards, and then you're actually laughing. And this is all we had right now to run the PHP. Then I actually get the uh, the Maps API. I get the YUI, so I actually have an access to the different DOM elements. That is much and to events without worrying about browser differences. And then I just include my Warwick.js file, which is all the JavaScript that is actually necessary here. Now here's a neat little trick that I keep doing in all the things that I do because instead of having a lot of JavaScript creating a look and feel and changing colors and changing layouts and changing paddings, all I do is that when the page is loading or has loaded down to here, I actually add a class name of JS to the body. So this will now give me a handle in my CSS to actually style differently for the JavaScript enabled and for the JavaScript disabled version. So when you saw earlier that I turned off JavaScript, None of the styling actually got applied that uh, puts the paragraphs out on the left or hit the paragraphs. So instead of looping through all the paragraphs in the list and hiding them, all I have to do is actually write a CSS selector that hides them for me and I don't have to do any looping in JavaScript, which is always a bit slow. So with this, I've got my list of locations. If I turn off JavaScript, it actually shows you what is possible here. It's just a list of sections without any maps and anything. And actually it renders out quite nicely. If I look at the source code here, I will find out that each of the sections now has a URL with the IDs, a class, a Lee with, with a has image if there is an image, and a running ID with P0 to P6 for the parks and so on and so forth. So all of this information is now in my HTML, and this is all I need for JavaScript. So instead of rendering out another JSON object or something like that, all I need to do is actually access my JavaScript, uh, access my HTML in JavaScript, and get the information out of it. But before that, let's take a quick look at the CSS, how I actually have hidden all of these when the clicking is supposed to be happening. So if we open the CSS, you will see that I have a body.js section.ul, which I position absolutely to the left and give it a height and an overflow of hidden to actually make sure that I don't have a long scroll bar on the page. And if there is a show, um, if there's a show class on the section element, then it should be position relative, left zero, top zero, height auto, and overflow auto. And that's all that there is to it. I hide all the geo information because I don't need to show it on the page. I just need it later on for reading, reading out. And the rest is just like looking pretty things and putting a bit of padding on things and rounded corners and so on and so forth. So as I've already included the grids.css and the fonts.css automatically with that, all I had to do is just put some colors in. So all in all, I've got 46 lines of uh, CSS here that do all the things that you've seen earlier. So let's talk about the, uh, the JavaScript a bit here. So the first thing that I'm doing is that I'm actually um, defining a uh, an object to give me a namespace. So instead of just having lots of functions floating around and with maps you always have a lot of global things floating around, I just wanted to store them into a, into a namespace. So WWDS is actually my namespace for everything here. I then use YUI3 and I use the node element which allows me to actually access the DOM in a much more clever way than uh, the DOM does. 
and I call a function with y and that means if the yui has loaded all the dependencies of node it will automatically execute that function. This means I've got a uh, I've got a closure for everything and I don't have to worry about any of the uh, any of the spa namespacing here as well. So then I add the class to the body to trigger CSS hiding. I've done that before as well, but I found people that when they used my scripts they forgot doing it, so I'm actually doing it here again. I normally like to do it in the document because there I know it's going to happen as soon as possible. This might here might be a bit delayed because it actually had the Ajax API before the, the Yahoo API. So it, it took a bit longer to actually hide the things and that just doesn't look right. I then make the I then make the headers on the keyboard uh, the headers keyboard accessible and you do that by setting the tab index to minus one and that will means you can now access them with keyboard although they're header elements and the same with the ULs and the same with the info box. And this is all I need to do actually to do the showing and hiding of the links uh, of the lists that you've seen. Y delegate gives me a event delegation. This means it actually it actually adds a handler to the main element out there to the body element and to all the h2 and finds out if an h2 element has been clicked and then it does the functionality that we define in here. So prevent default stops the click from happening. On an h2 that's actually quite useless. It would be necessary on a link, but I keep it in there for like normally doing it with links as well. And if you want to change h2 to a's later on, it would still work. Then I actually go one up from the e-target. The e-target is what you click on. So from the h2 I actually go up to the div and then actually see if there's a class of show on the div. If there's no class of show on, if there is a class of show on the div I remove it. If I, there's no class of show on the, uh, on the div I add it. And as you've seen the CSS earlier, if there is a show class on it then I actually show the URL otherwise it will be just in the section URL without it. So this is the whole thing that actually moves the uh, uh, shows and hides the lists out there. So there's no need to actually loop through all of them. This is all you need to do if you use event delegation and a clever CSS trick and a little bit of JavaScript. The Y1 eTarget next UL and the focus is once again for focusing the first UL in the page when you clicked on the H2. This makes it easier for keyboard users. I then put in the info box, I put in a welcome blurb. So I set the inner HTML and get all the information here and so on and so forth. This could be in the HTML, a lot of people will do that, but this actually only makes sense when JavaScript is available. So it should not be available when JavaScript is turned off. So I do it in JavaScript. I then start the, uh, the Yahoo map. So I get the Y1 map node. This is the way how you can actually get the DOM node and this as the uh, Yahoo map uh, API needs a real DOM node and not a, um, a facade like YUI3 gives you. I had to go through that. I add a type control, I add a zoom long, I add a pan control, I add a disable key controls. This means that the key controls for, uh, for scrolling the page will not scroll the map, which can be rather annoying. I set the map type to a hybrid map and that's all I needed to do to actually get my map going. And then I started with the parks and library and museum information. In order to plot the parks on the map, I actually need to get the information. So I get all the dot name spans in parks and get the inner HTML of that. So if you remember in the index.php, when we write out our, our different sections, I actually write out a span here with a class of name inside the uh, inside the ID here and inside the sections uh, section div or in the parks ID here. So in my JavaScript I go down the same road. So I say like span dot name get inner HTML. We actually if you give it span here it would be actually much faster but it's okay this way as well. The locations I get by reading out the geo span at the uh, the span inside the geo p and get the inner HTML of that. As you remember, the data set came back with the, the latitude and longitude as one string separated by a comma. So if I, if I now loop through all these parks, I get the real coordinates by splitting it at the comma, and then I have to define a new geo point in Yahoo Maps to actually set a marker. So I define a new geo point with the coordinates, I push it into a points array. This one will be later on necessary to get the right zoom and, uh, and, and latitude, uh, zoom, zoom level and bounding box. I create a new image which has to be a Y image for the API. I give it the source park and the size and then I actually set a new marker. I set a new marker by giving it the point that we defined here, the image, and by giving it a running uh, 
ID of MP plus the I that we're looping through here. So this one will give me a handle later on to hide and show all of them and also will give me a handle to get back the information that I need to have. So instead of having a smart window and getting the information and copying and pasting it in there, all I actually need to have is a handle that tells me which of the markers have been clicked and what their, what their ID was. And this is what the Y event capture thing here does. So it says the marker, the mouse click, and I copied and pasted all of that from the API documentation really. So in there I've got a function where I, where I use the closure and I get the get element by ID this object ID is the ID of the uh, of the marker that I've clicked here. So this one will, beca will become MP1, MP2, MP3, and so on and so forth. So all I need to do is replace the M with nothing, and then I get the element with the ID that I talked about. So what is this? This is actually, if you look at the loop that we've done before, and I set the ID here, is P1, P2, P3, P4, and in our JavaScript, this becomes now as we re remove the M here, it becomes P1, P2, P3, P4. So I'm actually reading the inner HTML of, uh, of that section of the page and then actually put it uh, uh, call the show info function, which does nothing else but just putting that into the info element. But we're going to come back to that later. I add an auto expand to the, uh, to the marker that tells me which, uh, which park it is and I click for more to invite the user to actually do something with it and then I add the overlay marker to the map. This is the same for all of them. This is the same for museums. I just go to the museum's name, Museum Geospan, and I put another image in there and the rest stays the same. And the same for libraries and the same for schools. Once again, I could have used it in one function and just made this schools a parameter or something like that. But I, I always found that when you, do it, when you do something like this, further down the line there will be one change in one of them, so it actually doesn't hurt if you just repeat some code here, just to make it more uh, easier to maintain in a second level. So then I find the best uh, get best zoom and center from the points. As you remember, when we looped through all of them, we just kept putting things into that points array. So the get best zoom and center automatically finds you the centering of the points, uh, at the centering of the map, and the best zoom level, so all the points are visible. And then I actually go two, two out from that one because I found out that when I rendered the, rendered the map the first time, all the things were overlaying. It was really hard to read. And that was basically all I need to actually get the map out there. So this renders my map and that's done. So the next thing I wanted to do was allow a bit more functionality to the map that we normally have. So I added a button called size with uh, some, uh, some UTF-8 characters under the map and that allows me actually to resize the map later on. So if you go back to if we go back to the mashup itself, you will see that there's a larger map here and that one allows me to lar uh, make the map larger and smaller in case you want to see some more information here. So other buttons that I needed to have was the libraries button, the parks button, the museums button and the schools button. And I set the schools button to class inactive because I don't want the schools, I show the schools up front because as you've seen, there's lots and lots of schools there. I use buttons for this because that's what they meant to do. Buttons are actually things that call JavaScript. If I use links that don't point anywhere and I don't have that functionality, I actually had to put an href in there that doesn't make any sense. So buttons are a very, very good idea. And uh, YUI here allows me to append and prepend easily without having to go through silly things like parent node, insert before, and so on and so forth. Again, I'm using event delegation here. So I'm delegating a click event to all the buttons inside the element called container. And these are actually the ones that we just added to the container. And then all we needed to do is actually test which of the IDs, were, with, with what the ID of the different buttons were. So I get the um, the event target of the uh, of the of the click event here, and then I read out the ID of the event and get and do a switch statement. If it's the size button and it's index of smaller map, then set the inner HTML to something else and set the style of the map to uh, small. Otherwise, to smaller map and 600. So that's what we just saw the uh, making the map smaller and bigger. If it comes to the libraries button. We actually have a uh, we toggle the markers for libraries and we toggle the markers to we turn them on or to turn them off and we say show libraries on the button or hide libraries on the button and we add or remove an inactive uh, inactive class on the button itself. 
So that will allow me to actually style the button a bit differently and we know when we turn something on and off. Again, that works the same for all of them. We just send through different strings for MP, ML, and MM and MS. And we call the function, uh, uh, we call the function uh, toggle markers for all of them. So the content of the info window is set with a show info function. We saw that one earlier that is being clicked when actually I click any of the any of the markers on the in the document. And that one sets the inner HTML to info to that HTML and removes the class intro. That is what I just do for styling. So if I go back to the original uh, info section here, I actually set the content of the info uh, info section to the blurb at the beginning and I add class intro so I can style it differently. So if you look at the mashup, you will see that this mouse is green here with white text, but if I click on any of those, it becomes gray and not as just in your face as the information had to be up front. So the uh, the show function that I talked about earlier here just does this. And the next thing I do is like I test if the info has a link in it and if it has a link then I focus on the link. If not, I focus on the info itself. So that way a keyboard user will have it much easier again. The toggle markers function gets the uh, get marker IDs from the map. That's a function that the uh, YOI, uh, that the Yahoo Maps API gives me. I loop through them and I test for the string that I sent through, through here. So for example, MS, uh, 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 MP and so on and so forth. What I do when I set the uh, when I set the markers up uh, up there, I give them different IDs, and, and then I loop through these different markers and I hide them or unhide them. Uh, notice that hide is uh, that unhide is too different from hide. I would have thought this was show, so that took me some time as well. And this is all we have to do. So this is all the JavaScript that does the mashup. You've seen all the PHP that does the mashup. You've seen it in action. So there's nothing, actu nothing actually. <laughs> there's nothing actually that keeps you from doing something like that as well, or make it even better. I dare you. All the code is up on GitHub. So this is all I had to say. Thank you very much.